Neonatal hepatitis is this inflammation of the liver tissue in newborns, usually between one and two months after birth. A minority of cases, about 20%, are known to be caused by a virus that infected the infant before birth, through the mother, or maybe shortly after birth. Several viruses that have been known to cause neonatal hepatitis are rubella, cytomegalovirus, and hepatitis viruses A, B, and C. The other 80% of cases are said to be idiopathic, meaning we don't really know what the underlying cause was. A lot of times viruses are suspected, but it could also be due to other genetic disorders, cholestasis where bioflow is impaired, or metabolic liver disorders like alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. This last one's an inherited disease in which the alpha-1 antitrypsin, or AAT protein, that's produced in the liver isn't quite produced right, and is essentially the wrong shape. When this happens, it can't get out of the liver cells, and it ultimately builds up there and causes liver cell death, inflammation of the liver tissue, and hepatitis. A newborn or infant with neonatal hepatitis will often have jaundice, causing this yellowed skin and eyes due to the blockage or inflammation of the bile ducts. When these are blocked, bilirubin, a yellow pigmented component of bile, builds up in the blood and starts to get into the tissues, causing yellowed skin and eyes. Bile, though, is an essential part of fat digestion and absorption of fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A, D, E, and K. So children with neonatal hepatitis and jaundice may fail to gain weight and grow normally due to this lack of adequate nutrition. Bile's other function is removing toxins from the body, like bilirubin, but also things like drug metabolites. So if bioflow is reduced, these might start to deposit and build up in the skin and lead to itching and rashes. But the bilirubin might also be filtered into the urine through the kidneys, causing darker colored urine. Since hepatitis is an inflammation of the liver, patients may also present with an enlarged liver, or hepatomegaly. Because such a large portion of neonatal hepatitis is idiopathic, it can be pretty tough to diagnose. Jaundice is one of the keys to recognition and will usually prompt further tests. Imaging tests like ultrasonography might be used to examine the bile ducts, but in some cases a liver biopsy may be required. For a biopsy, a small piece of liver is removed and examined under a microscope. A common finding is multinucleated giant cells. Multinucleated giant cells are cells that are the combination of several neighboring and distinct cells. Notice how these cells are all clumped together to form this, well, giant cell. In the case of neonatal hepatitis, this would be made up of several hepatocytes. These sort of can still function, but just at a much lower level than normal. When these guys are found, it can sometimes be known as giant cell hepatitis. Usually infants are treated by paying close attention to nutritional needs and supplementing vitamins. They might also be given medication to help with bioflow. Most infants actually recover with little to no permanent damage to the liver. But if jaundice and hepatitis continue for six months, though, then it might be considered chronic liver disease, and by that point there may be further complications like cirrhosis and liver failure. The liver might become scarred and physically feel firm and hardened. And at this point, liver transplant might be considered a last resort sort of choice for infants that have severe liver disease.